If you would please raise your hand on the Zoom. We will get started with President of Basketball Operations, Jeff Weltman. First question goes to Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Jeff, good evening. Uh, just first off, uh, what did you like about Cole Anthony that had you select him at number 15 overall? Uh, we, we like a lot about Cole. Um, first and foremost, we love who Cole is as a person. Um, he's smart, he's tough, and um, uh, uh, he's battled a lot of adversity, and we feel that he's going to be an excellent NBA player. Pat Welter, Spectrum Sports. Uh, Jeff, um, two questions for you. Um, you know, you've had a bit of a, a type, so to speak, so far in Orlando, the long athletic guy that can, that can play defense, so whether that's just coincidence or not. Uh, as another story, but Cole doesn't kind of fit that mold. So, you know, what made you maybe break it? And, and does that kind of say to – it says to me maybe you think he could be a star, but I'll, I'll let you answer the question. I never said I had a type. You guys always say that. <laughs> <laughs> I never said it. <laughs> no, listen, man, we look for basketball players, you know, and um, we look for guys who make others better and who have toughness and who have IQ and skill and uh, to be able to look at a guy like Cole, who really was a top three kid coming out of his high school class in the country and um, kind of had that had that stamp um, um, to be able to get a guy like that, who just had a had a kind of injury riddled year and, and struggled a little bit on, on a team that, that, you know, didn't do as well as they had hoped. Um, maybe that maybe that suppressed his value, but um, not for us, it didn't. So uh, we, we feel very fortunate to be able to look at a guy like Cole at 15. And I just wanted to, to follow up. You mentioned the health there. Um, obviously, it's a year where you didn't maybe get as much uh, in-person evaluations as you would have. So can you tell us how you were able to evaluate him, what you were able to have access to, and how healthy and ready to play is Cole Anthony? Well, you know, we, we had uh, uh, several Zooms. Uh, I should say a couple Zooms. And, um, you know, we were able to do a live visit with him, which uh, – which was really important because you're right, this was a limited access year and we only were able to do visits with a very few select kids. And uh, Cole was very impressive in the visit. Not only was he healthy, but he was uh, bouncier and livelier and, and, and stronger than we had seen him in college. So he's clearly been uh, putting in a lot of work and, and um, uh, I think he did some things when we saw him that we, that we felt maybe even were probably uh, would have been tough for him to do during the season. Um, and you know that's what happens when the young guys get healthy and they 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 work at it. Um, th these are these are the trajectories that they're on if they're hard workers. And Cole is, is an extremely hard worker. That there won't be any harder workers in the draft than him. Tim Reynolds, Associated Press. Hi, Jeff. Good evening. Hi. Um, watching the the broadcast, and we all saw the emotion that that he showed a after after hearing his name, I mean, you've alluded to it a couple of times. I mean, he, he did not go through a, a very good year health-wise, obviously. Did you get the sense, I mean, he comes from an NBA family, we know all that. Did you get the sense that it would mean that much to him? I mean, we don't, you don't see that kind of raw emotion from a 15 pick very often. Did, I, I'm, I'm just curious what you thought watching, just watching his reaction to it all. Well, uh, no, I don't, I don't know about, you know, you know, the emotion and, and kind of like just being caught up in the moment of it. Obviously it's a, it's a watershed moment in anyone's life. So, so I, you know, you never know how people are going to respond to that, but the passion and the drive that probably fueled that emotion that we saw tonight. Yes. That, that we, um, that we encountered in every, in every um, kind of visit with him. And it was something that, that really gravitated us to him because this, this game is hard. This league is hard. And to have that inner drive, that, that kind of chip on your shoulder, as they say, really means a lot. And, um, you know, Cole has that. He's, he's driven to be great. He's driven to make his team great. And um, there's really nothing more important in our league than that. So maybe that's where the emotion came from. He's, I think he feels he has a lot to prove. Um, and I know he's eager to do that. And if I could follow up quickly, it's not just going to be an issue for him. It's an issue for him and 59 other kids tonight. There is no summer league. Your offseason, his, his 
acclimation to the Orlando Magic is going to be about 12 days before, before training camp. How, how daunting is the task for Cole or for any rookie this year? Because the learning curve is so steep for them under normal circumstances, and it's going to be so accelerated now. Yeah, Tim. I mean, that is a great question, and it's something that everybody in the league is talking about. You're right. Typically, we have a few weeks to ramp up, get them acclimated. We go to the summer league. They'll take a week off. They'll, they'll, they'll do kind of some camps here and there. They'll come back, you know, a couple months before it's the season and start to ramp up, and it's none of that. We're, 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 in, we're in training camp in a couple weeks, and we're playing real games three weeks after that. So I will say this. Um, Cole's – Cole's uh, aggressiveness and his IQ um, and his toughness, I think will serve him well. But obviously, you know, as always, I never want to place too many expectations on a rookie, someone who's never done this before. We will, as you guys know, always be patient and um, do it the right way. But we're just really excited about where Cole could get to. And, and most, most importantly, wherever he can get, he will. That's what we're, the, we're supremely confident about. Thank you. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Jeff, uh, why does Cole Anthony make sense for the Magic? What prompted you to, to, to draft him? Josh, haven't you been listening? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, listen, Cole, Cole is, a, is, a, uh, is a very talented guy that we didn't think would get to 15. And uh, I think that... Um, for all the reasons that I've been discussing, you know, um, we're excited to have him. I guess if you ask that question, maybe are you asking about it positionally? Um, and and if, if that's where you're going, I would say that, you know, at 6'2", with a strong body and, um, and, and, and a high motor and, and a high skill level and a high IQ, you know, we feel Cole is going to be kind of a modern guard and he's going to be able to play both positions and, um, and, and, and elevate others around him. So if that's, if that's what you're asking, Hopefully that answers the question. Have you got a, a how much did uh, his supporting cast uh, at UNC uh, view your your take on how he played during his his season? Yeah, look, I mean, I don't want to speak ill. I mean, like NC UNC is one of the storied programs in the country, and they had a down year. And um, obviously, you know, we factor in everything when we scout. Uh, you know, uh, the positions that he's putting his teammates in, the positions that they put him in. And, and obviously it matters. It matters a lot. So that's part of scouting is kind of trying to uh, recognize the context and, and understand what that looks like. It's not just how many points the guy scored and what's he doing. It's really like where, in an NBA game with the different spacing and different rules and different set of abilities and talents around you, how does that project? And so, uh, yeah, I mean, we try to, you know, we try to factor all of that in, 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 in all slices of our projections, whether it's scouting or analytics or anything else. So, yeah, we take that into account. Thank you. Aaron Goldstone. Thanks, Jeff. Um, you mentioned how Cole Anthony was a highly touted prospect coming out of uh, AAU and, and high school. And you don't see with a lot of elite top prospects, um, you see the prolific scoring, but you don't see – you know, a lot of elite prospects take pride on the defensive end. And I don't think that's the case with, with Cole. When you were watching his film, you know, I know this franchise, you know, your identity, a lot of is defensive, you know, you have a defensive identity. How much did, did Cole's contributions and the pride he takes playing defense, you know, pop on film and stick out to, to you and your management team? You know, Aaron, we, we have a great defensive coach. And, you know, I always believe that, that we will be a good defensive team. But I said from my very first day here, we want fighters. We want fighters. And Cole Anthony's a fighter. And he cares about winning. And he's going to do what it takes to improve. And he's going to do what it takes to help the team win. And, and so he, we do look at him as a two-way player. And um, we believe that he will buy in and um, sacrifice and help lift the group. So... Uh, yeah, that's very important. Okay, we have time for two or three more. We'll go Eric Wilson. Uh, Jeff, appreciate your time. I kind of do want to go back to what uh, Josh Robbins was saying. Um, from a positional standpoint, you have Markel and you have DJ. Um, when you were looking at Cole, was that more of a, you know, these guys 
Markel fully coming into his full second season, DJ being the vet, was that looking just to add that kind of depth for the team? You know, in the draft, we, I know we talk about this a lot. Uh, you know, the draft is about trying to get the best talent, and, but not just the best basketball talent, but the best, the best fit as far as toughness, work ethic, uh, team commitment, drive, IQ, skill, everything. And, you know, we, we thought that Cole um, was one of the uh, elite players in this draft in all of those areas. So um, in, this, in this age, you know, you really can't have enough guards. You can't have enough skill on the court. You can't have enough shooting on the court. You can't have enough IQ on the court. And, you know, the other thing about Cole, kind of going back to the last question, when we talk about guys that defend, Cole Anthony is the best rebounding point guard in America. Guy averages almost six rebounds a game. So listen, this this guy just gets it done, and and um, you know, there's enough there to uh, to just you just want to put good good tough basketball players on the court, and that's what we see in Cole. Okay, this is going to be the last one. We'll go to back to Josh Robbins. Jeff, I'm curious, uh, what prompted uh, you to trade the second round pick, and can you see yourself making a deal to to get back into the early second round tonight? No, um, honestly, you know, uh, you guys know um, that, um, you know, you guys know our roster situation and what we, what we don't want to do is um, add players until we're sure of how our roster is going to look, going to look. And obviously we have to go through free agency, but um, would rather keep rost roster spots are of great value to us right now. So, you know, look, we turned one second round pick tonight into two future second round picks. So, you know, we're not we're not uh, throwing it away or anything. We're just banking it, and um, and and that way we kind of keep our uh, flexibility open in the next few days as we enter free agency. That was the reason. Okay, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, guys.